and welcome to House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. I keep wanting to call it the House or House of Dragon. It's House of. It's the House Dragon. of the Dragon, not Game of Thrones. Um, episode. Episode six. This was a big moment. This was a big, what I call elbow moment, in that we have a change of actors. I was dreading this moment. For Renera and for the Queen. Um, Renera, the actress who plays the grown up Renera, I don't know, but I feel like I reckon she looks incredibly like the character from Euphoria. I think that's why I keep thinking I recognise mm. her. And Olivia Cook from Thoroughbreds. Well, I think, um, I think it was too soon. I think they didn't look that much older than the previous ones. Well, I think they could have aged the previous ones up a bit. I, I mean, mean, they were both really good. Really yeah, matches. but I mean, you're right, because the younger, um, the younger Renera, given that she's had sex with her uncle, it's not as if she can't do all the grown-up things. She's done a lot of the grown-up things. She's had sex. Yeah, she's I, done I, all I, I think they could have aged them up because yeah. we're going to have to change them again, aren't we? And I think yeah. too many changes isn't good. So what did you think of the opening scene? I thought it was quite a powerful opening scene, just on a close-up of Renera's face having a baby. Yeah, it's really good. And you were talking about how and women really, really go through hell. It was a really positive birth, thank God, after the ripping the other one over. True. Positively, so, apart from she was, she was summoned to the king. Her father. Well, summoned to the Queen. Well, summoned to the Queen. So that was our first pointer to the fact, what I was talking about last week, is that I think the Queen is going to become very bitter and twisted and ambitious for her son. Mm. So it didn't really gel for me that, because she, it, it was unbelievable that she would drag herself to the Queen when the King was there as well and being all nice. There was no threat to her. To not bring that baby, she could have easily yeah, I know what you mean. said, I know what you mean. "Well, in a few hours or yeah, tomorrow." Yeah, see a bit later. So it was just—it was she... a lot of build-up. Yeah. What I was expecting is that when we got there, the Queen was going to be ferocious with it, and there was no explanation for her fear. Yeah, and also it's not as if she has a bad relationship with her dad, Rhaenyra. So exactly. it's not as if he doesn't. As long as her dad's her... alive, she's protected. She is protected, and he's a doting father. He's a blind father, not literally, but metaphorically. He refuses to see the fact that really was the subject of the beginning of this episode which is that we were getting to grips with the fact that Renera has essentially had kids with countless different men. No, 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 not the count. She was the same kind. All three kids are his. That's why they've done a really good job of making them all really look like each other as well, because there's a lot about how they don't look oh, like... Oh, I'm, I'm conflating the fact that I thought the blonde-haired... But the blonde-haired boys, of course, were the king's son, weren't yeah. they? They're so eagle. she's got three yeah, yeah. sons. She's got a new knight. As I predicted, the queen was going to take the other knight for... But I liked how incidentally that was dealt with. Yeah. Was she, as she went to the Queen, he was simply outside the door. I like that. I like it when parts of the narrative develop without them having to fucking show us every yeah. bit of it. Yeah. Um, so they're going to call the baby Joffrey. Um, yeah, so the dad is her knight. So she likes her knight on the side, doesn't she? She does. She, I don't think she's got much choice with that, with the husband she's got, to be quite honest. Yeah. Well, I got very confused because, of course, we then went to this baby dragon scene and you actually said, I really like the dragons. I never thought I'd hear you say that sentence. No, I like the way that they use them. It's not overdone because otherwise it becomes like a dragon fest and it would, be, it, would, it would piss me off. It would become fantasy laden, wouldn't it? I um, like that. It was like I, a baby dragon, though, wasn't it? I'm going to be honest. Go on. I've loved every other episode and this episode was all right. Right. There's a bit too much with the kids that weren't great actors. It was kind of all right. The King's kids aren't great, are they? Egon isn't good. Yeah, so it was, it was all right. I mean, we're not great in this country for child actors. If they were American actors, it would have been a very different thing. Um, what about Egon masturbating out the window into the, into the street? Yeah. What did you make of that? What was that trying to tell us? Well, I think he's a vile, horrible character. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly is. Egon, obviously, so that, you know, he, he essentially would not, theoretically normally be heir to the throne. As I mean, the what he's seen from son. the maid looking away and running away from him, and it's a rapist, that he's yes. he's a bit of a sadist. True. So we don't want him to be king. Yeah. Um, and so the Queen... <sighs> you seem troubled by this episode. Yeah, I think it was such a good build-up as she walked all the way to Queen and then it fell flat. Right. And the Queen is very good and we're building there, but I think they could have just... Put a bit more oomph behind it. Behind yeah, what the Queen's malevolence, the Queen's or malevolence, kind of being a bit, being yeah. a bit tricky. Um, the ki uh, Renera's husband is irritating and but good. He's good. He's kind of wimpiness. I wasn't sure whether that was the actor or the character. Yeah, but it's quite kind like, of annoying me. But I like the way in which they. What's it called? You call it a vanilla? Is it a vanilla? What was it called? A vanilla wedding? Or vanilla, vanilla marriage. Vanilla marriage. I mean, I like the way in which he. No, has, it's called a lavender marriage. Lavender marriage. Thank you. I like the way in which he's kind of. He's very amenable. I mean, he knows what's going on, and he knows that they're not his. And because he's a complete and utter um, hedonist, it suits him well. He can drink. He can have sex, like she says, with all the younguns. 
and he's got a position of power and money and his parents are happy because he's married well so he's, he knows what he's up to and I liked the way he thought that he could just push it further and go off and play wars and she pulled Queen on yeah no she did she is really really good the she, actress she, of Faye Rhaenyra is excellent she is yet yeah, I don't feel she carries the and I think maybe you've hit the nail on the head with the whole summons to the king and queen I thought she seemed a stronger personality when she was younger she doesn't seem as strong or no, as certain of herself. No, 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 no. But she, imagine the danger that she's living under, having a lover. Yeah. At any point, if somebody publicly points the finger, it's all over. Her children could be killed. Her, well, her lover, her lover boy on the side so night. She's a mother now. Her as lover well. boy on the on the side's night uh, night that she's now had the children with. It's important to, to say his father is the king's right hand man. His father is the King's, King's whisperer. whisperer, who used to be Otto, of course, played by Reese Evans. And there is a scene where the knight's father says to him, if you're caught and if you're, it's known what you're up to, and if Renair is caught too, you, you will bring shame on everything and you'll be castigated. Even though everyone killed. in the palace knows. So she knows everyone in the palace knows and the rumours are whispered. And it's her, simply her father that's keeping her from probably being burnt at the stake. So when her father dies, she's in huge trouble. Mm. So she's very strong, she's very powerful, but at the same time, she's smart she knows that she has to box clever so everybody doesn't wind up dead uh we flash over to we cut to damon uh he's off in some other part sort of he's, he's a bit listless that was a bit damon, odd. It's it? a bit odd it didn't, it didn't gel, really gel because we didn't so, get so any point yeah we didn't get anything in between suddenly he's got this beautiful wife and these children he's obviously softened a bit he's all cleaned up i quite like he's... the analogy I, I i felt there was an they were drawing an analogy between harry and megan the way in which these two are sort of him and his wife mm. are sort of set to the side He's the black sheep of the family. He's had his family. It's almost like they're in they're in LA doing their thing. Mm. Um, but I didn't I didn't actually buy into his sudden. One minute he's fighting everyone and wanting to prove that he's the next in line to the throne and wanted to be near the throne. Next minute he's kind of almost suggesting he wants to sort of draw his pension and. Yeah, so retire. I didn't believe in it. We did another great birthing scene and then the brilliant bit with the dragon. Oh, hang on, you can't just throw that out like that. That was an astonishing self sacrifice by a woman. No, it was... wasn't a self sacrifice. It was, was suicide. Well, she yeah, couldn't take I mean. the pain anymore. It wasn't self-sacrificing for the baby. Everything I say you're disagreeing with. Yeah, because you're wrong. Call it suicide, what? but it's the same so, thing. Well, sacrifice is Away what? from pain and agony and everything. Yeah, she does so it she's with... committed suicide. Yeah, yeah no, it was the most extraordinary suicide. A woman walks away from birth. She'd probably been hours or maybe even days. She'd heard that there was no way out. There was no way out other than to be cut open. Well, Damon and she a... decided to take her own life rather than have that. And I thought it was an extraordinary oh, it was scene. an amazing moment. Yeah, I mean, I think, because, of course, Damon was given the same trade-off choice that uh, the king was, wasn't it? You know, cut her open and kill her and save the baby. But she, t I, I, lo I love the way she took matters into her own hands. I saw it as a, I suppose I saw it more than just suicide. I saw it as a, a, a statement of feminist power as well. I felt it was a woman saying... I'm in control of my destiny. I hope so. Yeah. Um, they tried to draw attention. I think the Queen, was it the Queen who tried to say to the King, look, this is what Renée is up to, but the King, uh, King's refusing to see this, isn't he? He's kind of like a doting True father. True love, doesn't yeah. see it, doesn't, he knows everything. Yeah. He knows absolutely everything, but he's refusing to, the minute he starts to believe or says it to anyone, then his daughter's life is in danger. Mm. And he still loves her mother. Mm. Now, one of the characters that came into this a little bit more, he's been, we've seen him before, and you guys will know his name, is the Lim I call him the Limping Lord. The sort of Iago of the piece, isn't he? Sort of like in the margins and in the shadows and in the shades and in the kind really of, you know, creepy. behind Very the good. Very good. He's from the RSC. I don't understand a single thing he's up to, though. That's well, well, we didn't it's understand. Very it. woolly script around Yeah, there. it wasn't very good. He was talking to the Queen. She looked horrified, mm. but then she said, yes, do something. He suddenly goes to a prison. He releases a lot of misfits and the misfits head off. I had realize. to turn away. Did they actually cut the guy's tongue out? They did cut a tongue out. And you so they saw did it. cut all their tongues out. Well, you saw a tongue cut out. So we to presume they've all had their tongues cut out. Perhaps. Because they're his team of people that can never tell what you happened. you actually see the tongue cut out. Oh, my God. You're, you've got freedom, but at a price. You can't tell anyone or talk to anyone. And it becomes clear that the limping man, I can believe... Eat without a tongue. Can you what? Eat without no, a no, tongue. That's a good I think the limping man is looking to become the right-hand man next to the king, and if he does, oh, all sorts of evil and terribleness will happen. And I think that's why he's in cahoots with the queen. I think he might marry the queen. No, oh, do you? The limping man? I think he wants to be the king. Oh. Anyway, so these misfits he's got, because, let's get this right, Rhaenyra's knight on the side is being taken off by his father, isn't he, to get him away from things, because it's all getting a bit too, it's getting a bit too hot and heaty. And they're worried they're, they're going to be rumbled and all this mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, so the king's actual assistant takes the knight away. They head off to his kind of look, you know, palatial kind of place in the in the countryside. And that's when the misfits. That's where the misfits come in. They're sent in to fucking kill them all, which is horrible. Right? When murder happens in the Game of Thrones landscape, it's big murder. Yeah, it was awful. And of course, Rhaenyra will eventually find out that the queen 
was responsible for murdering her lover and father of her children. I thought this was the Queen's strongest moment. She looked horrified at what she had allowed to happen. She was saying- But deep down somewhere she knew oh, that it was gonna get bloody. So again, it's the thickening of her heart and her scar oh, tissue. Oh my God, okay, well there you go. So Yeah, I mean, it was still good. It was still good, but- Not your favorite. The last, all the previous episodes have been incredibly tight and faultless, and mm. I found quite a lot of faults in this one. But I still steps. loved it, and I still gonna watch next week. Yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those ones that's kind of like, it's, it, it, it's you know, what they call them, a filler. It's like a filler. Yeah, I think next week it will kick off again. It feels fair, yeah, that's the right way to describe it, a bit of a filler. Yeah. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.